Okay, so um, to recap from our last adventure. Our um, uh, well, uh, Thorwald had decided that he wanted to, he was at least considering taking a day job in the morning uh, at the in the warehouse. And I believe he was going to be making like five to six gold pieces a day. You know, six gold pieces a day, yeah. So yeah, he that, took the job from the foreman, Jigo. Yeah. And, uh, and Johan's pretty impressed. He thinks, the, wow, the economy must be pretty good here. And if you can get a job like that, and uh, that's pretty impressive. And um, uh, I... Um, the three magic users, the ladies were, had been in the woods where LaCroix had, uh, done the concoction, creating some, uh, healing ointment that, because we found that those herbs mm -hmm. and, um, did, did we want to, um, uh, we had well. We had learned that the captain was not going to budge with his decision to leave in the morning, mm -hmm. and that he would be able to replace us just as easy as finding a couple of more guys anyway that he needed right. for his crew if we weren't going to go. And um, Stormy had decided that um, if. The rest of you weren't, if any of, if, uh, if the two girls aren't going to go, if LaCroix and Olala are not going to go, then she's not going either. And, um, did we want to go back to the tavern, try to, or go back to the town? Well, I and think try that's to where find... we, I think that's okay. where we ended up. So from my recollection, it, it basically started out. That we were all staying at the inn. We went and talked to, well, we found out, uh, went to the shipping yard, went to the captain. Everyone was kind of on board at, at going and working 12 hours a day and having to come up with our own food with no real resources on the seas. And it was <laughs> Thorwald that, that said, you know, I'm going to go do something. You know, I'll figure something else out while everyone else was kind of into it. But uh, then we, after hunting for herbs and everything else, we kind of came to the mutual conclusion that we weren't quite prepared to go on, what was it, a five-week journey? Yeah, uh, three three week journey. Three week journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you guys, you guys want to get more prepared, try to get some more resources yeah. together and stuff. That then that's uh, yeah, totally makes sense. And, and when when you guys. When we are having this conversation, Johan decides that, you know, that does sound like a much more reasonable idea because he, although has some stuff and we bought some food, we figured that would get us there. We, uh, we, he realized that, you know, that they don't have much more than this one settlement that we're aware of in this new land. He's kind of he kind of weighing it over in his mind, and he's deciding maybe he doesn't want to ship off. Maybe he does, but he's got to go get his stuff if he's not going to ship off. Right. We're, we're anxious he, to like, get to the new land, but we don't want to go unprepared or thinking of yeah. long-term consequences. And, and he... Uh, he left some of his gear back oh, on the ship. On the ship. Yeah, I thought we went back and got that, didn't we? I don't. Uh, the last I remember, <laughs> everyone came together at the um, pub. So, you know, the, Stormy, Lacroix, and Oala were going to go camp out, but then they ended up coming back and saying, "Hey, wait a minute, look." Um, we put we, no. I remember putting Lacroix on the ship briefly after I came back with the potion. So I'm sure we went and grabbed our shit because we had started a plan. But Johan wasn't there. Johan and Phil went to go get the food oh. and, then, and get, get a and, ration. And they met right. in the bar. And then you yeah, guys were just you. coming back. 
Stormy, LaCroix, and Oala talk to the captain and, you know, kind of let the captain know, you You're know, right. what we were saying earlier, we're not going to follow through. And, you know, if you can't hold off and, and the captain said, I'll be back in five weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So now we all met back at the bar and yeah, Johan left his, his gear there on the ship. So now, and he says, well, you know, I, I really wanted to get to the new land and I left my stuff on the ship. I need to go back and get that. And he said, so, well, guys, maybe I'll see you in the new world. And he slaps Thor on the shirt, not slaps, but kind of gives him a, a strong hand on the shoulder and says, my friend, here's to you and your new venture. I know you'll do well with your job. And, uh, and he says, hope to see you all in a few months. <laughs> And uh, Thorwald, he's going to head out. Thorwald grabs you by the arm yeah. and pulls you in close. And he says, so are you going to the, are you going to take the offer of, of Captain Gundel of the Royal Griffin? Yeah, because we're kind of, we've been drinking, so. <laughs> right. I said, uh, I have. put the gold down. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I pull you in close and I whisper in your ear and I say, or we can go and retrieve your items and see what we can loot from the ship before it takes off in the morning. And not knowing enough about Thorwald, having only met him, you know, maybe a few days ago talking and devising our, our you know, our venture, um, now he's a little skeptical and he says, well, I'm not a thieving man. I would never, never take anything like that from anyone. I would never take from, from, a, from a captain. And he seems like a, a very well, uh, a very honorable man. But uh, he says that I'm going to go, and, and, and I think I'm going to go on this journey. I think I'm ready for it. Okay. And he says, "You all of you, I wish you well. And, well, you know where to find me. I'll be in the new settlement of, what is it, New Zhao, Jason? Yeah, New Zhao. I'll be in New Zhao. And uh, he, he says, you know, waves to you. Later. And but, good you know, luck, good <laughs> luck, my friend Johan. And Von Longhausen exits the building. He has now left the building, <laughs> and he's going to uh, hurry along. And it's nighttime, and uh, he's hurrying along, and he wants to make his way back to the ship. Okay, <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me. So you you want him to go actually take off and leave the party? Well, I'm just here. going back. I'm going back to the ship. Okay. And um, I want to see what I see on the way there. And once I'm able to approach the ship, um, see if the I think it was a rope ladder or something that was had been out that we were able to climb up. Or some something that where we could get up to the up on the ship. Okay. Yeah. And that's... see if that's still there, and see if he sees. Yeah, he's the still captain. there. I see mean, if it, he sees it's... the captain up there at all, or anyone. Okay. First, before approach, before. So wait, what's everybody else doing? Is everybody we're else? Just... We're we at still the tavern. The pub. Yeah, yeah, the only person yeah. who's left the pub is Johan. Everyone else is sitting around talking at the pub and um, plotting what we're going to do now. Okay, so and, you need to get your gear back. Is that what you're going to do? Um, or? Well, he's he's, he's he's debating. He's thinking yeah. in his mind as he goes. 
Well, you know, as he's got a he's got to take a little right. jump there, and he's kind of thinking, weighing over in his mind. I could just maybe get my stuff and stay, but I really wanted to. I really wanted to start my life out in a whole new place and be an adventurer. What do I want to do? Yeah, yeah. And he's just kind of kind of rolling it over in his head and weighing the the situation. Right on. Yeah. Well, the ship's there. I mean, you could do whatever you want. You walk up on it, or um... um. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll climb on up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, it's just. Uh, uh, do I nobody, see the? Don't see anybody around or anything at the moment. Um. Well, then I'm gonna. It's nighttime, assume, so. I'm gonna assume that I can go back down, uh, into the the lower portion of the ship, and uh, go back to um the the room or area where um, yeah, you where can. my stuff was. Yeah, you go ahead and climb down. Uh, and you climb down, you see the captain standing uh, at the other end of the hallway, looking out his uh, bedroom door towards you. And I say, good captain. He says, what is it you need? And he says, well, I understand that you've decided to ship out in the morning. And, well... Although I really wanted to go on this journey with you, and I, I just been thinking, maybe I'm not ready. Right. Well, isn't that uh, what you guys all said earlier? Johan wasn't there. You jo well. Uh, wait Johan. a minute. Well, well, he doesn't know that I wasn't part of what yeah, those girls were Yeah, that was thought. Stormy, LaCroix, and Oala. Right, but, were but the there. captain doesn't know that LaCroix and everyone didn't yeah. tell Thorwald that. Or Jorgensen that. Uh, they didn't speak okay. for, they didn't speak for Johan, though. It's no. perilous trying to keep track of six characters with three players. Johan, uh, <laughs> Johan was at it? the bar like, at the time. I think uh, I really want to try to avoid situations where everyone's separated. As okay. much as possible. Well, um, I'm um, just let I'm gonna just let him know that um, I'm not ready for this journey. However, I I um, I like I'm back just to let him know, and that I wanted to pick up my gear, and uh, and wish him well, and hope that on his return, maybe if he's all right with it, I may be ready at that time he just kind of looks at you and nods his head <laughs> <laughs> he says is there anything else <coughs> no captain thank you for your time and thank you for the offer um but <coughs> um i must be going and you know get his stuff and head out very well. Farewell and, to you, then. And uh, then I'll head back to the tavern. Yeah. So, and, at, <clears throat> and in the tavern, um, Stormy has a few coins left. How much would, uh, like, maybe a pitcher of, of wine or a bottle of wine um, cost? A bottle of wine? Cheap wine. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, you could spend a lot on wine at some places. Um, trying to trying to look at like prices on similar items, something that would be, I don't know, one gold. Well, well, ladies, these boys have been drinking heartily. Uh. Would uh, would either of you like to have some wine? I'm buying. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Well, and I'm putting down Everybody. one gold for some wine for me and my gal pals. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you kindly. And because we're we're devising what are we gonna do? Well, our friend Thor took a day job, and it sounds like he's going to make some good money. Um, and Stormy's thinking her uh, 
her bill for uh, the, her stay is probably up, so is um, she's probably going to need to ask if she can, uh, how much it would cost for, say, another week to stay at the inn. Uh, you guys have been paying one gold per day. One gold per day. Yeah. Ooh. She's going to need to make some money, too. Lucky she's got some things that she can offer the world. Um, right. <laughs> no, she's not like that. Um, oh, she's <laughs> kind of, <laughs> I'm the one with the dirty mind. Um, no, she's uh, she's kind of thinking, uh-oh, that's right. She's kind of, she's getting short on change, but she doesn't want anybody else to know that. Um, she just bought some wine, which is nice. It'll keep our, it'll keep her warm. Uh, if she's got one more night on her, if she's already paid up for one more night, that's good. But she's thinking, what am I going to do? I need to earn some money. And she knows... And you She's guys have got... heard some. Uh, you guys have heard some rumors too. Some local rumors in the last yeah. few days about things going on uh, that you might be able to investigate. Some of them could possibly lead to making some money. Well, there's a reward for that missing loot we heard, so mm -hmm. that might be. So, so are we like maybe do. overhearing people talking about it in the pub here? Um, well, or not it's... really at the present moment, but. This oh, okay. is just stuff that, uh, you know, collectively as a group, you've overheard. Maybe some of it in the pub, um, some of it on the street or wherever, you know, at the warehouse, at the docks. People mention things. So, yeah, I just kind of tried to generally gather some notes about things that were going on in the area that you guys might have overheard, you know. Okay, who, could it be? So there, um, could it be Oala? Why don't we do it like this? I mean, if you don't mind, because you're the DM, and mm -hmm. I'll roll with this. But why don't we do it like this, where while uh, Oala is enjoying some wine, she pulls out. I believe she has a a notebook. Yeah, she pulls out her notebook and starts discussing what she's heard around town. Oh, good. Cool. Hey, uh, <laughs> so we have everyone but Johan with us right now. So yeah, we think Johan is is off going to the new world. We don't realize yeah. what had taken place. So that, that's that's why I wanted to leave it like that. I yeah. wanted it to be like that. I like that. So she she turns she she's sipping the wine with Stormy and and um, La Croix. La Croix. <laughs> And um, <laughs> Thor wants to buy some, a pitcher of uh, mead for for the guys here. So how much is a pitcher of mead? A pitcher of mead! One gold piece. Okay, that brings me down to three gold pieces. And so, <laughs> so we're all sitting around laughing and, and talking about the excitement of our new world and, and how... Um, you know, we're going to get prepared and, and we're brainstorming, you know, possibilities and, and maybe even, you know, uh, what can we do around here to make money? And Olala says, oh, well, I have taken some notes around town. I've heard people talking about a number of different things. And one of the things is vanishing sheep there's a reward to to um, over some missing sheep shepherds shepherds have been talking to me I went out out of town and talked to them and there's an unusual number of sheep that are missing this past week and they very much would reward us heavily for for finding some information and maybe getting those sheep back to them. Um, another thing, this is very unusual and it piques my magical interests, where there are statues that are coming to life. When you say that, um, 
Stormy's eyes widen. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And furthermore, I had the tax, the the our duty, the duty men. They the the king's tax collectors have disappeared the duty men. <laughs> after <laughs> traveling through the section of of, uh, of town here, out just outside of town, and this could be very rewarding because we'll be working for that power hungry authoritarian king. However, when it comes to taxes and the money that they collect, we may be able to get some loot and a reward. So that might be even more financially re rewarding. And that sounds like it's just up our alley. And there's mm. one other thing people have been talking around town that I've been interviewing. Yeah. That is what, what really does intrigue me this the 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 famous boa steel you might boba. have seen him oh boba boba steel like, like boba fett but... like boba <laughs> okay yes boba steel yes boba mm -hmm. steel the the well-known actor in this region and musician had his very expensive loot go missing after a performance really? after last evening's performance this just happened the other night you know how he played at that that shelter on the other side of town so and that was the oh, loot that that not the, a shelter it was uh, the uh peaceful hornet inn ah the p oh he played at the inn the peaceful hornet in and that was the the defining loot that made him famous that he did in his some of his most famous performances missing that means there's a thief in the area <laughs> yes and a reward to be had perhaps ah well it's very hmm. valuable to him and I would and... love to get my lips around his loot. <laughs> what? Sorry. You're going to make it home. Wow. <laughs> That's a bizarre statement. And, and how... She's a bizarre lady. And, and how old is o Oala? Oala? <clears throat> Let me see. Oala. She's, she's a teenager, correct? No, I think she's... 23 but let me see okay she is 28 oh okay and uh, stormy's 25 and um and so uh and and now i take it since um in in the house rules detect magic is kind of like an innate sense that our character or an ability that we have or that we can cast at any time. Is that right, Jason? Well, consider it to still be like casting a spell. Okay. Like it, it'll still be like if you were to use it during combat, it would still count as your action for the round, uh -huh. you know, or whatever. But, uh, you know, you're just, you're able to do it freely as many times as you need, you know. I would um, guess that the three of us being um, unless you find a way to if you if you're a clever enough player to find a way to weaponize it somehow though then the yeah. privilege will end up being revoked. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. yeah. Abuse. Abuse. Spell kidding. abuse. Spell no, abuse. You know, you hear stories about pl players come up with all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Uh, unintended uses of spells and magic yeah. items that are ridiculous. But yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would guess by now. And the fact that, you know, we've, uh, at least Stormy had been observing them for a few nights or days um, here and there, and the others had talked previously that the three of us also being out of town for a few hours, we probably picked up on the fact that we all have some magic ability. And so she's not surprised at all that the two of you are much like her and 
that uh, they could we could really put our heads together and probably be able to to look into this mystery and maybe solve it. Scooby Scooby Doo style. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> this sounds like a mystery for Mystery Inc. Um, I think we can do it, guys. <laughs> and what time is it? Ten thirty already. Uh, Holy shit! Well, yeah, ten thirty at night. My <laughs> time. Yeah. Oh, in their uh, world. Yeah, um, it's, it's late in our game too. Their world. Well, we, we left. Rest? We left off at, at dusk. You know, yeah. e evening last time. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, then it's not that late. So you could well, you could go if you wanted to investigate uh, that missing loot. You could go to that peaceful Hornet Inn. You guys know where it's at. It's it's not far away, a little further into town, and well, you could see if that see if Boba Steel is there and if he'll if he'll talk to you or whatever. Yeah, that wouldn't, sounds but, like. But fun. we've been kind um, of sitting around BSing and drinking. Wouldn't we want to yeah. do it in the morning? You could. I think yeah, we should rest. Yeah. yeah, you might be better off doing it in the morning. Yeah. We're a little drunk. Now we could go look at living statues. We might not be too drunk to deal with statues. But I don't know if we want to do anything. Right right there's, just, there's been a there's been a rumor that kind of started. It come from it came from the direction of kids and maybe young teenagers oh, yeah. talking about it. But uh, they spread have spread a rumor around town a little bit about one of the cemeteries uh, just outside of town, and they're saying that some of the statues there move around at night. Um, so a lot of people have heard this recently. That's kind of common talk. Yeah, but town. yeah, but no, like no authorities or adults or anybody that that could be trusted <laughs> to investigate it has really you gone know, out this, there. You know, and this this no one really believes it. They think they think it's just a delusion, or or it could be a magic trick or an illusion of some sort, or you know, and who knows? Something that's uh, been going on for a while. This missing loot business is is news. It's new, and um, you know, if we and know things uh, mean, there there, there are that. there is a fair amount of crime in this city. You know, okay. there there are burglaries and there are street muggings and, you know, it, it, mainly in, in certain areas, you kind of can tell, you know, just mm -hmm. just like in our real world, you kind of feel a little uneasy in a certain area at night. And it's because there's creepy shadows and creepy people and who knows what's going to happen, you know. <laughs> this missing loot business is uh, something new. And, uh, but this isn't kind of a touristy area. This missing loot where this happened. This uh, peaceful Hornet Inn is kind of a. Um, it's an inn, and they also have like a small to medium sized playhouse in there, like a dinner mm -hmm. theater type of place. Um, and the performers will often stay in the in the better rooms that are upstairs on the third floor. Um, and then, and then this is kind of a typical place that you would find like in the country too, like in other cities that, you know, you might find a similar place to this. And uh, so you're kind of familiar with, with uh, the place he's like, you guys might've even been there before. I don't know all your backstories or what city you're from, but I assumed you all kind of wandered here and met up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So anyway, you could investigate that in the morning if you want, or unless you wanted that to go do something, so. or you could go. Did you want to go poke around in the cemetery at night oh, beforehand? Yes. <laughs> Swing in the Or did you want to split the party in half and? We'll split it in thirds. Go, well, the curry won't go well. <laughs> in, the, in, the, in the morning, we might want to stop by the kings. And see if we can find some information on the tax collectors, because while we're out uh, looking for a missing loot. Now the king, the king in question, uh, it would be a journey to go see. Okay. Um. Yeah. If, if if I pull up the map, well, I don't have a complete map of all of these lands yet, but I did. I did post like an outline of the map on our Facebook page. I don't know if you guys saw it. I think so. Yeah, I knew you posted it, but I couldn't see it. But from where you're at to where the King's Castle is, one, two, three, four, 
five. It'd probably be about a six day journey on foot. Yeah, and this missing loot just went missing. So this is, uh, if we don't jump on this, somebody else will. Well, yeah, you, you've got, you know, like the local guards are keeping an eye out for the for the missing tax collectors, and they've searched the area, and they haven't come up with anything. So, you know, it's kind of open-ended question right now. And also, we might not be quite, especially the, the ladies, might not be as um, obvious to, uh, we might just look like your regular everyday folk, in the area rather than like guards as far as um inquiring about a missing item and therefore like anybody that <laughs> might have stolen this would probably want to keep away from the guards yeah so yeah. um yeah. makes and, sense and the other two gentlemen they're not they're not official guards, but they uh, they probably don't look like the everyday guy, everyday citizen, but um, just my guess. Uh, Johan walking around with a shield and a sword probably doesn't. I know that much. So, <laughs> um, but uh, And he's on his way back to the tavern, but I don't know where he is. He's still, you know, he's going through the streets or whatever and um and well it is getting late do we want to finish our drinks and sleep for the night i want to go if thor says i want to go check out the cemetery the uh, croy's willing to go with thor she's well, a crazy stormy, old lady <laughs> stormy is interested she would like to check it out well, let's go, and Phil will come too. Phil will go wherever Lacroix wants him to, so he'll He's protect. Her dog. He's well, her dog. he he kind of is. He kind of is. He likes to take care of her and keep her safe and keep an eye on her, and he feels very indebted to her. So, and yep. he's a gentleman. He is. He's a nice Southern gentleman boy. You know, Jason. When um, <laughs> when it uh, can a magic user who has detect magic can they also detect like clerical magic and things yeah or is that complete okay just wondered yeah you okay. could yeah you could okay okay so we all we we um pay our tab and we finish up our wine and and mead <laughs> And we're feeling yeah. pretty good. And we and stumble out of the, <laughs> yeah. out of the end. <laughs> How far is the uh, cemetery from from the end? Um, well, you know, you would you'd have to go all the way through the city and out the other side. So, I mean, it would probably take you a little over an hour to get there. Okay. So Thor's feeling pretty good, and he's being loud as they're. They're walking towards the, in the direction of the Stormy cemetery. and Johan had not met before that day, and um, and they're they're not together at there. They hadn't been together at all. And Stormy's now with the five of them for sure, yeah. and she's she's now decided that hey, these are my new friends. Are the only people I know in town, and. Uh, and if Johan was to go back to the tavern and they're not there, well, shit, the, the people that I had now decided, I know I told them I was leaving, but I didn't think I'd come back here and they'd be gone. <laughs> they left me. We ditched your ass, well, man. Well, we didn't expect you to come back. I like right? that story. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, yeah, I didn't like know that. they'd be gone. Yeah. And, and so that we're all merrily. The rest of us are merrily on our way for adventure, <laughs> mystery, <laughs> adventure. In the yeah, and, yeah. And and Johan, right. Johan's backstory, Jason. He's hungry. He's lusty for adventure. 
And now, <laughs> yeah. now his He's friends are gone. And because he, <laughs> he jumped the gun and, and didn't, was, was feeling he one way wait 20 minutes. when he left. And he wouldn't even talk to Thor and let Thor talk him out of it. But then when he got to the ship, he realized, you know what? Maybe my, my newfound friends have a point here. And yeah. we're not prepared. Well, to, well, my guy. want to slave away and starve. Well, see, uh, Yo Johan has an intelligence of 10, which is average, and that's good. That's not bad at all. But his wisdom, he has a he has a 7 wisdom, which is a minus 1. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, he doesn't always make the best decisions right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is great. So oh, we're heading it's off. Cool. Okay, um, so you guys had you guys head off. To, uh, uh, cemetery and then a couple minutes town. later probably uh, some rough areas i assume <clears throat> um possibly I, and a couple minutes later johan is at the bar and finds out which direction you guys went and he says they need me <laughs> you decide to try to catch up with them then is yeah. that is yeah. that the plan okay yeah and i'm gonna go kind of at a a good pace so i'm yeah. not yeah yeah, and they're probably going. You know, there's a group, and we're drunk and stumbling. So you got one of them is old. And... <laughs> oh, but Phil carries me. I'm on his shoulders. Yeah. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, yeehaw, Phil, go. Well, you're like <laughs> what, four foot <laughs> nine. <laughs> the old one. Is she isn't she like really short too? Yeah, Lacroix's only four foot tall and eighty seven yeah. pounds. So I yeah. mean, really, Phil can carry me. Phil is. Um, Six foot two, one eighty five, and twenty two years old. He can handle me just fine. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. He's good. And we're He's just good. living, living life, and and we're living the good life, and just. It makes happy. me think of like when uh, if you ever saw the first Conan the Barbarian, yeah. where uh, where they go and they fight that giant snake in the tower, <laughs> at the bottom of the tower, <laughs> and they 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 ate some black lotus. And then they were all wasted on some like hallucinated or something. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It makes me think of that. So we're we're all catching a good buzz, and now we're off to the cemetery for moving statues. <laughs> hunt for moving living statues. Let's do it. All right. So yeah, to get to get to the cemetery, you basically just follow the river uh, in kind of a northeast direction outside of town, and. Um, you guys don't have any trouble finding it. It's it's the the roads are pretty well marked and stuff. You're not going that far, <clears throat> you know, outside the city. But uh, it does get dark. Uh, okay. is somebody gonna carry a light source? You I believe some... I have something. Let me look here. I okay. do as well. <laughs> um. Oh. Nightshade has a lantern. Nope, I'm not spells. seeing it. I guess I didn't. Okay, get it. I night nightshade can uh, uh, fix up a lantern. I cool. have. Okay, Olala has light <laughs> with a hundred and twenty inch. That's range. right. It was you. Yep. And she puts her her hands together in in a ball and does a little dance. Oh, you've got the spell light. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Okay. And and, and do I oh, have to roll to for That's cool too. Do you have to roll no not for not to cast the spell. No. Okay, and, so and I'm gonna cast the it. spell as we're and the walking. lantern. So you got a lantern and a spell going. Yep. Yeah, we should have plenty. <laughs> and Excuse me, Whoa. gentlemen. Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, and Bald Phil. Bald Phil does a farmer blow off to the side. Holds yeah. one nostril and let it rip. Woo, doggies. He says, excuse me, guys. <laughs> or sorry, excuse me, guys. All right, let's carry on. And, right. and Johan, although he's um, behind, he's going to stop and uh, work on lighting up a torch. I have 12 torches, and I have, I'm only going to carry one. But uh, I also have the tinderbox and flint and steel. All right. So you guys are well lit. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes, we are. I do have right. fire building skill, but that wouldn't do me real any good walking down the, the path. So now, You know, the cemetery in question is uh, 
it's at the top of a hill and it's surrounded by trees and there are there are a good amount of trees inside the cemetery too but it's kind of like a thick patch of forest uh with a trail going through it to this cemetery and you guys have located kind of where it starts going uphill now um do you want to like <clears throat> get yourselves into any certain formation or anything like that as you go up um, towards the cemetery. You can see it off in the distance. You can see there's like a kind of a falling down old fence. Looks like a wooden uh, like a wooden rail fencing. Um, and then and then beyond that all you can see is forest. Is but you, filled? you know oh. the cemetery is in there beyond the forest. Okay. Is Phil actually carrying LaCroix? Yeah. Yeah, okay. she's, on, she's um, on his shoulders. Well, um, Thor, Thor Thor's Wall. going to take um, the lead, and he's going to have his double-handed, two-handed sword uh, out, and he's going to be just swinging it around haphazardously. <laughs> Not no, haphazardously, um, no, um, for fun. Um, Stormy's going to um, walk uh, alongside of um, Thor Wall. And have her lantern out. Okay. Jason, kind of can you cool. move Stormy up near Thorwald? Thanks, Jake. Yeah, no thank you. And then we got Johan's like out of the picture still. He's back. Yeah. <laughs> and Olala's going to be just, you know, uh, right behind Thorwald, you know, kind of in the back. So we've got good light between the five of us all right what so are you guys the, the town we were we were in anyway that was zao you're in the city of zao okay i thought zao was new zao is the new settlement, new okay. settlement. yep okay oh yeah yep. that's right thank you okay so are we gonna climb over this decrepit wooden fence or what guys yeah you could see you've got this wooden fence and it's like an open gateway there's not even a gate there but it's just like a wooden wooden railing fence that kind gotcha. of frame kind of frames the uh forest phil can just uh, kind of throw a lacroix over the fence just, just, <laughs> no, 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 you can just walk right walk right we can walk opening. right through the opening okay. yeah we don't have yeah. to hit it with a big hammer okay. it's yeah. just there kind of as a frame to identify it as uh the center the cemetery there's a there's a an old faded wooden sign hanging up overhead too. Does what can we read it? It just says cemetery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beware. Not even pet cemetery, huh? Or it's not <laughs> a cemetery. Okay. And uh, yeah, beyond that, it's just dark woods with a trail going through it. Is what you can see. Okay, and is it pretty pretty big, or is it a small cemetery? Um. This is a, it's it's an older one, okay. and I mean for the time it was built, it was probably a considered a big one, but now it's a small one, you know, because okay. it's kind of like a city has grown up, you know, nearby. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it was kind of like a more <laughs> earlier settlers had made this cemetery, so. Okay. You know, you you would expect to find, you know, like kind of faded tombstones. Maybe things aren't as well kept as they once were. Uh, hey, I knew that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we see any statues? And are they still? Um. Okay. So if you, <laughs> if you guys are gonna head up into the forest. Olala's gonna want to check out some of these. I'm sorry. I'm moving. Stones. Moving you around. Yeah, Stormy's doing the same. Looking okay. For languages and. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys get up there and you uh. You start looking around and you see that there's a lot of headstones and, you know, there's probably a good couple hundred headstones that you can see. And out, out of those, a handful, maybe say one in ten, are some kind of a statue. Um, and, and it varies. Some of them are statues of that look like people. Some of them are statues of uh, just different, different sculptures, different design headstones and stuff. But there are some that look like people. Some of them look like children. 
but they're all just kind of scattered here and there. You don't see any uh, anything that looks like it's moved out of... I mean, it's hard to really say if anything has moved recently, but you don't see any obvious evidence of it. Um, okay. It's actually just still and quiet. Or the occasional uh, <coughs> owl, owl hooting nearby. Are there any... Is, is, are there any um... And some crickets. <laughs> I can't make a cricket sound. <laughs> I don't know what they call them. <laughs> Giant crickets. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I don't know what they call them in a cemetery, but where sometimes there's um, like kind of like a structure sort of thing where they would like have family. Um, like the mausoleum type yeah, of thing? Yeah, mausoleum sort of things. Are, do we see anything like that, too? There's a small one. Um, uh-huh. Yeah. There's one that looks like, you know, you could maybe put, you know, four people in it or something. Um, oh. Yeah, just like a little building, like maybe, you know, eight or ten feet long uh-huh. by about that much wide. Yeah. Yeah. Um. If it's not too far away, um, I'd like to go investigate that stormy. Yeah, you can you can <laughs> see it. You know, you know, a few steps away, you can go over and look at it. And it's just a stone, I, just a simple stone structure. Um, it doesn't have any, a, it doesn't have any windows. It has a stone door in the front it of it. Has a door, huh? Yeah, yeah. There's like a stone door in front of it. Real heavy looking. Mm-hmm. Um. And it's just kind of a brick, brick wall, brick exterior. It's got, mm-hmm. it's got like a engraving on one of the bricks that has the family name and some of the details about them on there. Are they Wait. the Longhosens? <laughs> no, no, not the, the no. Monticules. Yeah. <laughs> that would be quite a strange coincidence. <laughs> are, we, are we able to go inside the door? Can we open it? I do have a um, three engineering intelligence skill. You could try three. to push it open. Um, if you're the sort of person that would go into a cemetery and push open a mausoleum door. Well, you, you know, <laughs> LaCroix is exactly that. So she would like to go over and try to push that You can door do that. <laughs> and Thorwald is... Or, Thorwalt is going to kind of stay in between the two groups. The group that is looking at the headstones and the group that's looking at the crypt. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so he's kind of just keeping the, his eyes on both groups. The door looks like it would swing inward. And you find that it's it must be either blocked from inside somehow or else it's just too heavy for for you to push by yourself well, you might be able to Phil, I mean, you could get come on some over assistance. hey you guys it, young man <laughs> hey you guys <laughs> yep. all right y'all. come on over y'all and help out my my lady here <laughs> with two of you two of you straining you can feel it start to budge a little bit but it's still like really hard to move it thor comes over and he walks over <laughs> confidently. He's got a 13 strength and a one bonus. And he goes over confidently and, and tries to help the, the two others push the door. Okay. Three of you, you can manage to just creak it open. And, you know, the stone is like super heavy. You can hear it scraping really loud on the floor. Quiet. We don't want to wake them up. Yeah. <laughs> As you crack it open, there's this rush of dusty air that like oh. comes comes out. <laughs> yeah. And like, like, whoa. Like, like, wow. strand, strands of my, uh, strands face. of cobwebs floating in the air, coming out through the crack of the door as it opens. With the um, with my lantern, if after the dust kind of settles, if it settles. Um, can I, uh, can I kind of see in a, a little with my lantern? Yeah, you get a look in there and you can see that there are actually, uh, four coffins in there. There's like, from where you're at in the doorway to your right, 
and to your left, there are coffins, and there's like kind of shelves built in there. Mm. So there's like two stacked on top of each other. On, oh. but, but the upper one is on a shelf. Okay. So there's there's it's like that on the right and on the left. So there's four coffins in there, and then straight ahead, on the opposite wall, um, there's a wooden shelving unit, and it's got some objects on there that are like personal objects and mm. family uh, objects. Okay. You can see there's a, there's a painting, kind of a smaller painting on a shelf, and there are some things that look like they could be valuable. You've got, uh, you know, some plates and cups that look fancy. And, you know, the, you can see there's a variety of objects on the shelf. Well, um, they tell us that we can't take it with us when we die, but it looks like they took everything they had. Like they <laughs> moved in. Uh, well, guys, I don't see any statues, but there's a lot of stuff in here and a some, couple of coffins. Well, why don't we get on in there and see if there's anything worth uh, taking? There might be some good stuff in those coffins. There might be gold on those skeletons. You sure you want to take something from the dead? It hasn't stopped me in the past. Really? I don't see why Door I should laughs. start carrying <laughs> now. <laughs> they don't need it. Why should I not benefit from it? I'm still alive. Well, you've got a point there. Um, so you do might we want to enter? Yeah, let's open them up. Want to help me here, Phil? <laughs> Thor? <laughs> and who do I have? I have, is it you, Stormy. Jorgen? Stormy. Stormy, right. you can help. Come on, girl, get on in here. <laughs> yeah, she's got the lantern, so she's she'll go in with you. She'll go oh, in and so look around. So Alala is still kind of by herself checking out the um, the graves? The tombstones. Okay. Does she see anything worth reading? Anything interesting? You know, for her. Or... Now, um, she can she can read and write, correct? Correct, and she also knows okay. uh, ancient language and ancient history. So. Ah, okay. So we we need to decide uh, which language that's going to be. Wait. Which proficiency do you have? Let me pull up your character sheet here. Okay. You've got reading and writing. So we need to have we need to select a language for that, which I assume you're going to want like the common language yeah. that everyone shares, right? Sure. Okay. I'll put that in there. Okay. And then you've got an ancient language. Now that can mean either speaking or reading and writing. Okay. But but those are considered separate skills. And then we could pick a language, and it could be any of the ancient languages of the five realms that are being developed here. So you could uh, pick that country's native language would be considered an ancient language. What is the, the most imperialistic country? Most imperialistic. What language did they? That would probably be the. Uh, or is there an equivalent of like Latin? You know. With... I I would say Exodore is like the uh, British type. Um, that or the Vikings. Why don't we do with uh, Exodore? How how would Ex I spell it? Um, it'd be E X I D O R A N, you could say, Exodoran. Okay, cool. That could be your language. Yeah. And did you want to have it be like reading and writing? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. You know, she's she's all into learning and education and philosophy and history and herbal herbalist. That's cool. Definitely. Okay, so she can read and write common and read and write 
uh, ancient exit door in. Very handy. Anyway, so you're looking around outside at, for stuff, you know, just kind of reading tombstones. Yeah, yeah, just in whatever to, you can gather. Trying to look over. I'm not so. In other words, while everyone else is at the crypt looking for treasure and and material mm -hmm. items, she's more looking for something to enhance her. Um, just looking education. for information out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, while, you, while you're out there, you see uh, mainly what you're seeing is just regular tombstones with the usual kind of information about people when they were born and died and maybe something about what they did and their family and all that. So nothing like really of note that you see on that. You do notice that while you're moving around out there, you can't really tell for sure what's going on, but the way the shadows <clears throat> uh, from your lantern you guys have a lantern and a torch, or one of you had she, a, a she, light spell. She has the light spell. That's yeah. what she's using. To, mm -hmm. to you've got multiple around. light sources, and then you've got all these tombstones and statues and stuff around. And it really it does kind of put you on edge being out there, you know, because you're surrounded by a thick forest, and then you're in this kind of big clearing with all these statues and stuff, and you get the sense a little bit that some of them are moving. It doesn't really look like they're moving because you understand what's going on, but just with all the shadows and everything, it's really kind of discombobulating Trick effect, of effect, you know? Yeah. I mean, to where if you used your imagination, you could imagine that things around you are moving, you know? Because okay. the shadows are actually <laughs> moving. Well, yeah, they definitely are a lot. Yeah, and it's yeah, it can be disorienting. For sure. But at the moment, you don't see anything actually going on. You know, when you stop and focus on something, things are actually as they should be. But I get a sense of eeriness. Movement. Yeah. Eeriness. It's in okay. the back of my neck. Move. And down my spine. And your friends have actually kicked in the door of a mausoleum and then they're looting it. <laughs> well, <laughs> not necessarily. Tony <laughs> ain't touching nothing. She just wanted to see what was in there. Yeah, she's just providing a light source for yeah. Phil and McCoy. Yeah, I, I am the torch bearer. <laughs> I, I, know, I know nothing if anybody asks. <laughs> I know nothing. So she stops. From That's the coolest thing about D&D. &D. Wouldn't it be cool if you could just go out and loot everywhere in real life and like just go kick in doors and take stuff? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get well, away you with can, it. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> you don't tend yeah. to get away with it for very yeah, long. The yeah. consequences are a lot less <laughs> in D&D &D because, you know. Yeah. You could still <laughs> suffer, but it's not like you have to live with yourself. They don't have cameras yeah. everywhere. <laughs> or conscious. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, the, she gets a little scared and she stops from reading the various tombstones and kind of looks around and, and tries to uh, uh, be aware of her surroundings and try to see... You know, through the trees and sure, and at the statues, and kind of stops and really focuses on her surroundings. And Johan is still in pursuit, trying to get to the cemetery with his torch lit. It it is a it's a it's a nice night out there, and you, and you guys do you have all noticed that it's like a kind of a serene, beautiful place too, even though it's a little creepy. Um, there's a really nice view of the sky from where you're at, but it's, you know, you're surrounded by trees too. So it's like, you're looking up through a frame of treetops at the stars and, uh, I don't know. It, it, it's a pretty nice little place, you know, It'd be a nice picture. It, it used to be even <laughs> nicer when it was brand new, but it's still, yeah, it's got character. But you don't see anything legitimately out of place going on at the moment. It's just quiet and calm. Okay. I mean, you could you could uh, you could stay and wait it out and see if anything happens after a while, or <laughs> or you could even uh, it'd be possible to camp here too. Um, 
Does well, she feel need safe to enough in the environment to, to camp? Is that? Yeah, nothing, nothing seems, uh, you know, nothing's going on to worry you. Okay. Well, cool. She's going to step away and, um, go, uh, go find a tree and relieve herself. <laughs> so I'm going to take a quick bio break. That's what I mean. Right. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> All right. Wow. All right. Awesome. And Johan is still going along the, uh, the, the, area where he's trying to get to that cemetery that he heard about ah yeah okay well you do you managed to catch up to the cemetery there johan and uh and you, um you want to just look head around all right well uh look around to see because if if three characters went into that mausoleum he wouldn't see them and i might not even see the mausoleum from a distance and and uh do I see any of them? Do I see anybody anywhere? Oh, Allah went to go be over by a tree, so <laughs> um, I might not see anybody. I'm well, looking they, they, around. They're carrying lights around, so that, you know, yeah. so uh, they're not hard to find at all out there. Okay. Yeah. You know, um, as you approach the cemetery, you can see the, their lights moving around, and okay, yeah. Might I see? Oala over by the tree. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. you, well, you, I'm gonna go and approach her. You can see through the, you know, you can see that there's people in the cemetery. I mean, as you're approaching, so the closer you go, the more you can see of them. And well, I, okay. <laughs> um, you can approach the the group if you want. And, Well, they don't know that I'm coming. <laughs> Attack! Well, you might want to let them know, or uh, yeah. <laughs> is Johan coming up into the the cemetery right yes. now? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, he is. Okay, okay. He, he he's uh, gonna he's gonna uh not shout but say, "Bald Phil, Thorwald, <clears throat> are you here? Who's out there?" Thorwald, Phil. Olala puts out her. It doesn't quite comprehend. It's Johan, and puts uh -huh. out her light, and stands still like a statue <laughs> in the <laughs> darkness <laughs> while wow, this is all going on like I, a cat. I, oh, well, I see this this mysterious magical light over in the distance, and. Uh, by a tree, and I'm like, whoa, what is that? And I, so now I'm like going to pee my pants <laughs> because, you know, I have a wisdom of, you know, seven minus one. So <laughs> I'm kind of, uh, you know, a little bit shaken. You know, I'm a little bit like, oh, you know. And Olala I'm doesn't not... know if it's an illusion or a trick, right? Mm. Probably would kind of surprise her, yeah. Mm -hmm. And he didn't catch the the other name, the other's names, so he only knows Phil and Thor. Oh. And she mm -hmm. jumps up on a on a tombstone or a pedestal <laughs> and freezes and just pretends to be one of the statues. In this oh, and Put that's how the line. living statue rumor got started. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if, we don't are you, know, yeah. All right, are well, you Phil, really going to do that? Yeah, no, really. That's that's her goal. It's, it's kind of like, you know, how yeah, when she a cat know sees yeah. something it doesn't understand and kind of like freezes and, <laughs> you know, eyes get real big and just kind of pays attention and watches from afar. Basically, that's what she's doing. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, uh, with this... I'm obviously I'm going to see this. I just saw this light kind of material, you know, materialize. It could be a spirit. This is we're in a graveyard. It's old. This is an old place and it's creepy already. And I just saw this light, this magical light. And now all of a sudden there's this figure up on a tombstone. 
holy cow, <laughs> I, may, I may drop my torch and go, run away, run away. You're <laughs> 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 run in the opposite direction. You're like, hey, uh, ball, Phil, everybody. Uh, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe this, no. maybe this thing killed my friend, my new friends. That's true. Uh, That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to, I have my torch in one hand. I've got a shield and I was carrying a torch. So, um, identify yourself. <laughs> now, who do you say that to? Because you also see the, I'm well, sure I'm, you see some light over at the, uh, oh. crypt. Yeah. Yeah. Cause well. Phil's in the tomb. He can't see any of this. So he yeah. just heard someone yell. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. So, oh, but I guess while gets ready for battle, doesn't you know? Does we don't really know it's Johan yet, so we just know yeah. someone's calling our name in this windy, you know, graveyard, graveyard. beautiful graveyard. So he beautiful is graveyard. Well, right, yeah. Nice looking old, you know, old graveyard. It, you know, Jason said it wasn't really intimidating or anything. So okay, but it could be a ghost. It could be. <laughs> yeah. So he he prepares for battle and has his sword ready and you know. So Flight. Lacroix okay. Lacroix Flight. tells Phil to uh, to poke his head out and see what's going on out there. After all, so Phil pokes his head out. Am I able to see? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. you can see everybody. I can see everybody. All right, yeah. so I go, I go, oh, all right, everyone, everyone, relax, relax. What are you doing back, man? I thought you were getting on the ship. Oh, it's you. You, oh, oh, my friends, I'm so glad that, that you're here. I, <laughs> I, I was, a, he said, I no, I, I went back to the ship and, well, I decided Thor was right. I'm not, I wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready to set out. And, well, I, I, I came back to the tavern and you were gone. I asked around and they said that you guys had decided to come up here. So I thought I'd look for you. All right. Well, we're glad to have you back. But... I don't know why you came up here. Well, we heard that all these statues here, they were moving around. So we came out here to see what that was all about. But me and LaCroix and uh, Stormy here, we were about to check out what was in these graves, see if there might be something we could uh, get rid of at the village there and help us get ready for the travel to the new land, something that might help us. So we were going to check out what was up in this tomb. Really? Wow. Hmm. Mm. And he starts walking towards you guys and he's got his torch in hand and he, he joins you. And by right. this time, Lala understands what's happening and has faith that this isn't an illusion. <laughs> and, meets, and and slowly moves down off the pedestal and and meets up with you guys. <laughs> All right, so I'm I'm gonna head back into my Lacroix and uh, get back on in to check out this tomb here. And I have a question before we open anything, <clears throat> Jason. Yeah. Um, I have for I think it's Phil. He's my cleric, right? Yeah. yeah, he can turn the undead. So might that yeah. become important? Do I need to get this handy? <laughs> uh, you know, you never know. I mean, okay. yeah, if if uh, if and you he, see any undead, I'll I mean, I'll let you know for sure that you know you have the option. In, yeah, we'll know. Okay, we'll see some. okay. and he basic. also has protection from evil, so oh. you might cast that on. Uh, yep, that'd be a good uh, opening spell to cast if you were going to fight. I mean, anything okay. really. It protects you from anything. I mean, basically, evil. basically, okay. yeah. Okay. All right. Carry on. Carry on, Dungeon Master. Right on. Okay. So now, do I understand this correctly? Now, everyone is in one group now. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Or, or no, are For we still first spread time out? In the whole game. We're, we're all, all we, together. <laughs> except from the very beginning, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. We're now reunited and it, and feels, it feels so, so good. good. <laughs> and... <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. So now were you going to where 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 were you going to go? You're gonna go into this uh, little we're mausoleum the... building? Yeah, yeah we're the at the still the in mausoleum. there and stormy. Okay. Yeah. Okay, but the rest of you are all going in there too, right? Well, is that, is that right what now I we're just kind of all hanging out there. What is a Phil and Lacroix Phil's are in there, and Stormy, and Stormy. Yeah. Okay, and every and and everyone else is kind of outside. <coughs> Excuse me. The mausoleum. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not very big. I mean, it's no bigger than ten feet by ten feet. You know. So, okay. Um, yeah, if you and, all go in there, it'd be pretty crowded. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, um, uh, if we if it's crowded, then um, maybe maybe uh, Johan will stand outside, but have a torch there for light. Mm-hmm. Okay. Johan stands outside. Hold on a second here. Oh, I got the wrong tool. I'm trying to visualize. Okay, so Phil and LaCroix are inside, and everyone else is outside? Is that... Stormy's inside. Stormy's inside. Door's outside, just outside the door. Okay. Within, Olala's outside the door, and then whoever the elf yeah. or the green person is. Okay, so you guys, yeah, there's there's four coffins in there, and there's uh there's a shelf, and the, you see on the shelf there's some little boxes and stuff. Um, I mean you can go through that if you if you if you dare. <laughs> Should we? we just... an, um, I'm gonna cast detect magic. Oh, okay. And Ooh, see fun. if I notice any other magic besides LaCroix and Olala behind me. Okay. Nothing nothing okay. is apparently magic in this in this room. And that's that's yeah. use of a spell. That's a spell slot yeah. then. No, 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 no. Detect magic is a free ability. Okay. Uh, it doesn't count as using one of your spells. Sweet. Yeah. I think that's something that wizards or magic users should just um, be able to do. Okay, but but that was that was my round. All right, no problem. Um, I mean, you guys can let's open that investigate box. investigate yeah. the containers. Yeah, yeah you've got I'm a going in boxes. All right, so what you find is uh, <clears throat> some. It looks like the personal effects of the family members that are there. So you've got like some jewelry. I mean, and none of it looks like really valuable, but you might you might be able to get something for it. Um, okay. You know, nothing looks like it's made of gold or anything like that. But uh, <clears throat> uh, and then you you find some just odds and ends. Um, there, there's just a whole lot of knickknacks and stuff in these boxes. I mean, nothing really of any use or real value. Um, if you were to take all the jewelry with you, um, I'm not going to itemize it all and make a whole list of it right now because there's too much. But there's like a lot of little rings and stuff like that. Okay. Rings and necklaces. I would put it in the category of costume jewelry. Um, all right. Well, Phil will grab that up. If, you, if you're looking for stuff to pawn, maybe as a whole collection, you could take it, you know? Mm-hmm. Make um, sure you put it in, update your equipment. Then. I am right now. Yeah, I mean, you could just put, like, wooden box of jewelry. We could call it that for now. Okay. Um, wooden, wooden box of tomb jewelry? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, you said that there was a uh, a painting or picture inside. Um, yeah, yeah, there I, is. There Tommy's is going to look at that. Standing on the top shelf. Uh, it looks like a family portrait. You've got mm-hmm. four what people. You've got four people. It looks like probably you know a mother and father, and then uh, a younger teenage boy and girl. Uh, yeah, well, they're they're all just kind of standing together. These might be who are with us in oh, the coffin. Yeah, that's true. This must be a family. Yeah, very well could be. 
anything unusual about the painting? Uh, no, no nothing, <clears throat> okay. nothing really stands out about it. Um, along on the coffins, are there is there any writing on them or any inscriptions? Uh, yeah, they've they've got name plates on them. Okay, uh, Fred, Alice, <laughs> Fred and Alice. No, I can get I, you. The, I, I can get you the names. Hold on a minute here. But they're they're legible, and I could read them. Yes. Okay. If you're yes able to read. She only reads Braille. Only Braille. Well, <laughs> then you're out. You're out of luck. No. Well, and actually, wouldn't she not be? Because aren't they carved? Wouldn't she actually be at an advantage with that? Right. <laughs> no, no. She can. She can read and write. Okay. She has reading and writing for us. Okay, so I'm just <laughs> checking out the coffins, checking out the picture, checking All out right. different things. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for what's in here. I mean, okay. um, unless you're going to open the coffins themselves, uh, you, I'm you can do that. Not, I'm not up for it. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not going to personally. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, then yeah, you guys can, uh, uh, I don't know if you want to go back outside and, or did you want to well, stay here, like spend the night out here? Um, not in the mausoleum. Or, yeah. While but, they're uh, doing that, Olala wants to inspect the mausoleum and, um, see if there's any writing or any, any information on the outside of it. Just the, it's just got the family name. The family name is Challen, uh, and that's that's all the plates on the, on the outside. C H A L L E N. Okay, just like it sounds. Perfect. Yeah. <clears throat> um, inside, are there? Does it look like there's any um, any um? Doors on the floor or anything like that? Uh, no, it's like, I mean, it's a stone floor. It's made of stone blocks, okay. just kind of laid side by side. Nothing so stands out. Nothing that's a door. No. Okay. <clears throat> well, guys, it looks pretty creepy. Um, I don't see anything else around here. Um, mm -mm. What do you think? We may as well head back and get a good night's sleep in the beds we've already paid for, guys. I agree. <laughs> These old I lady agree. bones don't do well <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, you realize there's there's nothing going on at the moment, so you can either choose to spend more time here on... Uh, and wait and see if anything does happen or you can yeah i mean you can always go back into your i i uh, think back into a stay in, a, in an inn olala says i think if we want to see the moving statues we'll have to find a place to view the whole cemetery in the darkness and wait ah uh. Okay. I'm up for hanging out for a bit and trying. Yeah, yeah. So I would need to probably extinguish my torch. Um, Johan, and the lantern, um, I don't know how old lan lanterns like this would work. Are you able to turn down the lantern like the light source because i had to use oil to yeah i believe the way they it. yeah i i believe they just have a hood over the okay. lantern that slides up and down and you can control how much light you're letting out okay yeah um then i'd want to um either extinguish the lantern or have it so that um, the light is not showing. Okay. How is the moonlight tonight? Yeah. Is there um, any light from the moon? You've got enough. <coughs> or moons? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got enough starlight and moonlight overhead to where, you know, your eyes could adjust to it and you could walk through 
the cemetery without running into headstones and stuff. Um, I mean, yeah, you can kind of make out basic shapes and stuff within a certain distance, but it's not enough light to be as good as daylight. It's enough light to where you want to use a torch or something to be able to see anything in any kind of detail. Okay. So, Olala wants yeah. to get into her um, backpack and her belongings, mm -hmm. and she works out the grappling hook in the hemp rope. Okay. And, and attaches the rope to the hook and looks around for a tree. You're surrounded by trees. One the that, whole thing is surrounded by a thick forest. One that, that might look comfortable if she's <clears throat> able to, you know, use the grappling hook to get up and, and climb up in the tree and, and wait up there. Okay. And do I need to make a roll or? Well... Let's see. You've got a grappling hook and a rope. You're a magic user. How are your strength and dexterity? Above 13, average. 13, yeah. <clears throat> and 13. I mean, I don't see why you would struggle to okay. be able to do it. Um, okay, super. So super. Although you're not, you're not like, you don't have any special climbing skills or anything. But, I mean, you could get up onto the branch of a tree, okay. I would say, without without hurting yourself too bad. <laughs> so she's, she's going to do that like that, like kind of like how some hunters hunt deers in a little, you know, stand. A little no, stand I, would, I would say if you're going to go, if you're going to go climbing further up the tree though, in the dark, uh, it might get precarious, you know, I mean, you can kind of, you can get up to where you can look over everything though. Yeah. She wants to maybe go about 15, 20 feet at yeah. the most. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Coast. So that's where she is. Okay. While everyone else, I assume, just kind of settles tree. down. And... Yeah, kind of just whispering. sit down. She whispers <laughs> and says, I will get a bird's eye view. And then she throws the grappling hook up in there and slowly <laughs> makes her way with her non climbing abilities. <laughs> Johan looking up her. Look, you know. Does she have a dress on? Johan! <laughs> yes, she does. But there's no he, light. He, just, he, he looks at LaCroix and is like, oh, sorry. <laughs> 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 he kind of blush. He blushes. Uh, okay, there. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys sit there for a few minutes and in the quiet in the dark and he was just making sure she didn't fall. Uh huh. You, you kind of hear. Story. <laughs> you hear coming up the the trail, the same trail that you guys came on. You can hear voices, kind of real, real soft. Um, you can't make out what they're saying or anything, but it almost sounds like a conversation going on between a, at least two people. Uh, I'm gonna. But you can't really make out visually. Exactly. You can't pinpoint where it's coming from, but it's <clears throat> you kind of feel like it's the direction of the trail that you guys came up to get here. Like there's other people coming up that trail is what it sounds okay. like. Um, I'm going to draw out my sword from my scabbard and just have it in hand, but keep it down. Sure. OK. And uh, you do that and. You can still kind of, you can hear these voices just kind of murmuring, and you guys can see across, kind of across the cemetery from where you're at, um, movement, like possibly an animal or a person, you can't really say for sure, but it's in the direction of these voices, mm. so it could be these voices that you've been hearing are, are, are these people or whatever it is you kind of see some movement now and you hear the voices still and they look like they're headed in the direction of like the other side of the cemetery from where the trail comes into it so it's like they come up the trail and they're walking along and it looks like it's hard to make out in the dark at least two maybe three people um walking in close to each other and they're going across the cemetery um, is Thor's, there any? Thor's going to hide in it, and in, in, yeah, that's what tree. I was going to say. Is there any cover, anything that we could kind of 
kind of. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you guys can crouch in the trees or Stealthily. just yeah. just crouching down is is good enough because you're okay. in a cemetery, so there's all these stones yeah. around and everything. And Johan and Stormy both are not going to be far. F they don't want to take any kind of cover anywhere away from where uh, Olala went up into the tree. They stay around that area. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you guys are watching these creatures walking across the cemetery. Ooh. And you see them go all the way across. And they seem to be talking. And then you, they just, are they speaking a language we know? Well, it, it's too quiet to, okay. to really tell. You can just occasionally hear the sound of a voice, but you, you can't really make out the words for sure. Fair enough. I mean, you can't say that it, you don't understand it, but you can't hear, say it, we hear it well either. enough to know. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, and they just... Could be grave they, walk, they walk across it could be. and they disappear into the trees Ooh. on the other side. Where'd they go? They just kept right <laughs> on going. Was it a specific tree or a, a group of them? Uh, no, I mean, it was just, uh, there's like a wall of trees surrounding oh, the so they, they So they, they just went in the foliage. They didn't like... Came up the trail, the then they, in, <laughs> the entrance of the cemetery, then they walked all the way through the other side and kept going into the trees. Gotcha. So they like crossed it and continued into the trees. Mm. And, uh, you know, a few seconds later, you don't hear their voices anymore. Should mm. we follow them? Right again. Or, or wait for more? What do you guys think? Well, I'd hate to leave Alala up here in the tree, but she's probably oh, all right. I will, I will come down and think we should we should investigate maybe that has something to do with the moving statues Ooh. yeah um do we all want to move together over there or do we want to kind of maybe you know like they do in the in the military where kind of like one goes up and then stops and then, then the other one joins them and then goes up, another one goes up ahead or something like Olala that. Olala says <laughs> it would be to our advantage to stay stealth, but as a group is what she suggests to the group. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, if maybe we can move quickly to another area that we could kind of hide in or hide around and then, you know, inch our way up. Inch yeah, get... way up or footward, foot footward. Worm, worm, worm. <laughs> yeah, we want to stay far enough behind that we could, we won't be detected, but close enough to where we can still right. keep watch. an eye on them. Yeah. So you're going to try to move okay. stealthily over to follow them, basically. Yeah, yes, yeah. Sir. Do we need okay. to roll for stealth? No, no, you don't need to roll for stealth. There's no way, I mean, there's apparently no one there i mean at the moment so you're not even hiding from anybody that you can see okay so you don't really have a target to i'll put away my roller yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, can, you don't have to roll it right this second i just want to roll yeah, damn when, it. when we were playing um pathfinder we always he made us roll, roll for everything can, can are we able to see this you would be like, no, nope, you're blind as a bat. You see shit. <laughs> Everyone else in the party can see it, but nope, not you. <laughs> we want to work our way slowly, carefully, quietly as possible to that line of trees. That, yeah, that yeah. All, of trees. all right, so you're there. You're, you've slowly and carefully stealthed your way over to the line of trees where the people went. And... Uh, <clears throat> All you really see is it's just a line of trees. There's not like an obvious uh, path or anything. Um, you stop there and listen, and you don't hear anything. But you know they went. You know they went this way. Johan says, "Could be spirits." Whispers, you know, whispering. Should we detect magic? Do you want to throw out your spell? You can use it as often as you want. It's a freebie. <laughs> um well there's a there's a radius isn't there it's uh let me look uh here let's see 
detect magic. Hold on a second <laughs> here. Oh, I'm crashing from all that energy. Detect magic. Range, 60 feet. Duration, two turns. Okay. That's Cast it. Good. Yeah. Yeah. You can just look around and... Uh, 60 feet's decent. Yep. Give it a whirl, bud. <laughs> all right. I'm casting detect magic. Whoosh. Detect magic. All right. <laughs> Whoosh. <laughs> Whoosh. Sorry. <laughs> it just tickled me. Carry on. You're, you're detecting magic, but nothing is nearby to detect <sighs> at the moment. Shenanigans. Okay. Well, it doesn't seem magical, guys. No? Um... I, I don't sense anything. Well, hold on one second. Let me try something. Hey, is mm -hmm. anyone out there? We saw you. Where the hell'd you go? And Thor puts his hand <laughs> over your mouth. And, <laughs> like, that is not being stealthy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot we were being stealthy. <laughs> yeah, but we've all been... Uh, five of us have been drinking. Yeah. <laughs> I had a bottle and of Johan, wine. Johan put a few back before he went back to the show. Thor puts his large hand over your so mouth. So I elbow you back. You close. I got an old lady elbow uh, right in the stomach. Hey, who's out there? <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell me what to do, young whippersnapper. I will call <laughs> attention to myself if and when I please. All right. So you yell out and... Uh... You don't hear any any immediate response. <laughs> Darn it! Well, it was worth a shot. So, um, Olala wants to um, use her light magic to to create light, and looks on the ground for any kind of indication of you know trails of where they went, any kind of recent footprints. What does she see? Anything? Okay. You see, I you, really what you see is that uh, where they went, there is really no obvious trail or anything. Um, it doesn't even look like a place that you would normally walk through. If you were out hmm. just going for a walk or traveling from place to place, you would go around this because it's... It's just, it's overgrown. I mean, it's like trees close together, and then on the ground in between the trees are other smaller trees and bushes and stuff. So it's like really overgrown. Um, so they, you know, they kind of... Am I able to find their trail you, at you all? You would... Um, no, you don't really, you don't see anything obvious. I mean, you, you, you know which general direction they were headed. And they would have just had to kind of push their way back through, you know, like they knew where they were going, So there was basically. no indication that they went through here, so they could be poltergeists. Very well could be. Ghosts, I mean. Ghosts. Or it could just be that maybe you're, it's dark and you're not really a skilled tracker and you wouldn't necessarily, I mean, the you don't necessarily leave an obvious trail everywhere you would go. You know, these, these people didn't either. Um, they very well, you know, could have come back here through the bushes and you wouldn't see any evidence of it, you know? <clears throat> um, so I wouldn't be able to track them. I, she wasn't able to track well, them at all. Okay. Yeah. No, nothing, nothing that you would really be able to track them by. Okay. It's you know, not yeah. that she's a tracker. You know, or a hunter or anything like that. So it's not like she has that skill anyway. To... Right. You're looking at a bunch of bushes and stuff, you know. So bushes, flowers, weeds, whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, you, you know you saw the people come through here, but where they went, it's hard to say. No one knows. Okay. Fair enough. Well, should we keep walking, I mean, you could, guys? You could, you, could, you, could, you could try to make your way through if you want yeah. to, if you want to keep going through uh, the brush, you know. So at this point, we be have slow no going. indication huh, of, of no clue. where they went. Yeah. Or, okay. Well, you know the general direction they went. 
because you saw that. But uh, well, then after they disappeared into the forest, you don't really know. Okay. But you're you're on, you're on a cemetery that's on the top of a hill, and there's like a you know forest on the top of the hill, basically. So they can't have gone like super far. I mean, they wouldn't have had much of a reason to go up there if they were going to go far away from there. They they would have no reason to even gone up the hill in the first place. So just by using that logic, they must not have gone too far. Well, unless let's go to the top unless of the they've hill. somehow snuck around the perimeter and gone back the way, you know, it, maybe they've moved on by now too, but Thor wants to Thor since now that uh, LaCroix screamed and and we're no longer in <laughs> stealth, um, stealth, Thor wants to run in the direction he thinks that they are at. And, and if he runs, Johan's well, running not... running's not an option in that direction. Okay, it's, or it's to thick, move as quick, it's like thick as overgrowth. quickly as he like he can move in that. Yeah, thick it's like you basically. Uh, you take you would have to you've got your a light source in one hand or someone following you closely with one and you would have to like move branches and stuff out of the way as you're walking and you, you know with your arms and legs kind of push plants out of your way and stuff so johan tries to stop him <laughs> and he's using no, his sword to wait. cut through you could do that too. Yeah, you could try to yeah, just like hack your way through some that of it. Works, yeah. yeah. And, well, and and if if he continues, Johan will just uh, follow. Thor just ignores Johan's, uh, <laughs> and he's gonna follow you. Okay, and he's okay chopping through. <laughs> but of course, it, you know, it occurs to Olala that if if these were beings, physical beings of this realm, then you know, how did they get through all this, these branches? And yeah. She starts looking maybe, um, well, you're getting, th that's not real. That's, that's not really a problem. I mean, you're not having a problem getting through them. It's just that it's really slow going. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyone could do it. It's just going to, it, it takes a lot of effort and time to do it. You know, you can't just run through it. <laughs> like you'd, you'd have to move all these things out of your way as you're going. You know, otherwise you're going to get your eyeballs ripped out by tree branches, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> so if you're moving very slow is, is what is what you would have to do. Okay. And Johan's yeah. going to follow. Yeah. Okay. So you guys, you go back a little ways and uh, suddenly a lantern in front of you opens up and the area is flooded with light from ahead of you. Um and you see two people standing there. There's Are they na naked? There's <laughs> they naked? no, no. There's a a male and a female. They're wearing cloaks, and they're just standing there. They they don't appear to be armed or anything. Um, do they seem surprised? Yeah, they do. They stand there with the and they you know after they they shine the light on you. We're probably uh, surprised. <laughs> yeah. The guy says, what do you want? Thorwald speaks up and says, we're investigating the living statues. Oh, well, so am I. And uh, the girl's standing there. She just kind of looks scared. She's kind of huddled next to him. How old do they look? They're uh, like late teenage years. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. um, Johan's going to say, the two of you came up here for, to look at the statues. Have you witnessed them before? Ha! <laughs> he just kind of laughs. And he says, what do you know about that? Have you heard anything? I just heard that there are statues that move at night. Do you want to see them? Yeah. What do you think, Thor? Yes. Yes. Oh. Do you know anything of these statues, or is it just a myth? I can tell you how to see them. How? Well, you, yeah, you'll have to come with us. 
and uh, Johan will signal back to the others. He'll go back a little ways and then signal to him, come on, come on. He, he says, my name's George, and this is Manishi. We just come out here once in a while to have some fun. You can tag I, along if you want. I don't know, guys. These two seem a little hinky. <laughs> Thor confidently, confidently What's up in those rows? Says, What's up in those you know, Says that um, We'll be fine And he, he kind of Nods to his, his Big two-handed sword uh, Georgie, Georgie says uh, Well follow us You don't need those swords Everything's fine out here Nothing to worry about. Oh, we're bringing our and, weapons. Uh, <laughs> he says, let's, let's go, Manishi. And, and uh, they kind of walk off. They start pushing their way through the brush. Okay, we'll do the same. All right. You guys want to yeah. follow follow yeah. them? Olala yeah. and Thorwald is going to follow George and Manishi. All right. Phil, Phil and LaCroix will take the rear. And Johan, of course, is going along, and Stormy's coming on up with LaCroix. All right. Yeah, join us, Stormy. Come on. We'll take the rear. And Phil will protect us. Mr. Phil. All right. <laughs> Mr. Phil! So, all right, you guys go a little bit further, mm -hmm. um, and you come to a clearing kind of in these woods, and... The guy, Georgie, gets down on the ground, and the girl does too, nearby, and they start kind of feeling around. And you see him you see him turn over a log that's on the ground there, and he goes, aha, here we go. And he starts plucking off this stuff off of the log. It looks like some kind of a, a fungus that's like a kind of like a disc-shaped fungus that's growing on this dead piece of wood. And he holds it up in front of his face, and he sniffs it. And, and he, he eats it. And he pops it in his mouth. Ew! I knew it, yeah. And he starts chewing it up. And uh, she's watching him the whole time. And she goes, is it good? And he just kind of nods his head, and uh, she grabs a chunk off of there, too, <laughs> and does the same thing. And then they both kind of sit there for, for a moment, and they look at you guys, and Georgie says, do you want to see the statues? I don't know if I want to see them that bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what is that fungus you, you, you just ate? <laughs> we call it zombie flesh. I don't know what the, what the proper name would be. Well, um, some of us know about herbs. Stormy <clears throat> wants to uh, take a look at that and see if her uh, herbalism skill might help identify more about this fungus. Oh, the Croy uh, has that if too. If possible. All if right, possible. Mm, you guys get to make a roll. Okay. Ooh, you okay. get to roll yeah, it. You, hear that, Ken? you get to yeah. each roll. Yay! Roll Where's my dice again? Okay. Ooh, a roll a d20. D20. <laughs> okay, sorry. Did you roll? I'm getting there. Oh, okay. Let's Here, I'm going to roll. Roll. A, a d20? Yeah. Herbalism roll, is... Graham, roll. And I have an intelligence of 15. Right, what? and it's intelligence minus 2, so really 13 is your target. So you would need to roll 13 or less. What did I roll? For Stormy. Let me see. You rolled the an 18. wrong. Wait. No, he rolled one d twenty and eighteen. Oh yeah, I was looking at the old roll. Okay. Yep. Eighteen. You rolled too high. You needed a thirteen or less. Right. Thirteen or less. To, yeah. 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 To to identify it. Here I go. It oh. works that way. It works that way because the higher your too high too. the higher your intelligence is, the bigger chance you have. We're too smart to know what it is. <laughs> 
Me well, too, and, apparently. No, no, I, right. I, under, I understand the game. No, we I'm, did, we did it. I'm, I'm just, it's, I'm just laughing because it's like Lacroix and Stormy are too smart to Mark know what it, what it is. <laughs> All right, we're too yeah. smart for this. What's these kids. Lacroix's intelligence um, is a okay. sixteen. Sixteen. So your target would be fourteen. But so I do get, have a bonus two on my intelligence, so it's eighteen. Well, but it's no, still too high. With this, with this type of check, that bonus doesn't doesn't oh, factor okay. in. It's just going straight off the ability score itself. Um, okay. Yeah. I accept that. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we don't know. So right. you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Phil come over. Phil, come here. And I'm going to rip off a piece of it. And I'm going to say, go ahead and try this for me, honey. Tell me how it makes you feel. And he's just going to pop it right in his mouth because he's a good little fucking soldier. And he's... Mwah, mwah, mwah. <laughs> And he oh gulps goodness. it down. While he's doing that, um, Stormy's, <laughs> oh going to, uh, Stormy's going to uh, switch the quarterstaff to her other hand and because she's right-handed. And she's going to um, draw her dagger out and see if she can cut off some of that fungi and take it. She's not going to eat it, but she's just going to take it. Yeah, you just want to cut off like a handful of it, and yeah, cut off some of it, and then put it away to, somewhere. Put, or? put it. She's got a a pouch belt. She'll put some of it. In okay. There. And she's got a a sack in there. She can maybe put some of it in a sack and put it in her pouch belt. Okay. Well, uh, Georgie and Manishi, they they stand up, and uh, he says, "We got to get back over to the statues before this kicks in. Uh, we got a few minutes." All right. Let's head on back. We'll go back with you. <laughs> All right. So they they, they start. Oh, I'll follow you. They start mm -hmm. pushing their way back through the brush. And Phil, guys... how are you feeling there, bud? <laughs> you know, I'm I'm feeling all right. Phil, the uh, yeah. taste is a little musty. Yeah, I Ain't was gonna say that the stuff tastes <sighs> it tastes terrible, and it occurs to you, you're like, why would someone ever have eaten this? You know, um, but for some reason, these people know about it. And before, um, um, before we <clears throat> leave the area, though, could um, Olala collect this moss and put it in a, a glass bottle or vial? Yeah, yeah, you can. I'm gonna, I'm you can gonna, stuff it into a bottle if you want. Why don't I get um, three three glass bottles? I currently have eight. So, um, what, what's it? What's the moss called, or what are we gonna call it? For oh, uh, zombie flesh. Uh, Put okay. uh, <clears throat> zombie flesh fungus. Okay. It's a uh, you know you ever seen uh, on fallen trees and stuff in the woods? It looks like if you took a disc and shoved it into the tree, so like half the disc is sticking out. Mm-hmm. It's like yeah. that kind of a fungus. You know, you could just snap it off. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, and it tastes like a dirty old basement, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Phil says it tastes more like Aunt Cousin Bessie's gumbo. <laughs> All right. So Stormy's got a belt pouch full of this stuff, and uh, and then Oala's got what three bottles full of it? Yeah. And All right. Sealed up the bottles for freshness. <clears throat> As you guys are going along, um, Phil's starting to feel like a kind of a strange sense of euphoria, like being mm. lift, like being lifted off the ground almost, but. Ooh. <clears throat> but not quite. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to feel a little lightheaded, guys. My my feet Light feel a little funny. Stormy's asking asking him more specific questions about what <clears throat> he's experiencing, trying to study. She's trying to learn what uh what he's going through. So um whatever whatever Phil is experiencing She's kind of making sure she takes good note of it. Trying to take note of it, right? Yeah, yeah. He and he looks—he looks fine. I mean, he's, you know, he's walking along just like the rest of you. You know, are my pupils dilated? Yeah, I was just gonna say last night. <laughs> last night on cable, there was uh, uh, 
the fast times at Ridgemont High where Mr. Hand looks at, let me see your eyes. Uh, let me see your pupils. <laughs> are my pupils dilated? All right, so nope. okay. uh, before long, you make it back to the edge of the cemetery itself and out of the woods. And the, the teenage couple, uh, George and Manishi, they kind of wander ahead. I mean, they keep on going. It look like they have a certain place in mind, possibly, or they're headed over to the opposite corner of the cemetery. Well, Johan's definitely following. Yeah. Okay. You I guys all going to stick with them? Yeah. They're our right. trip guides. And uh, but as Phil's walking along, he starts to feel kind of queasy. Um, do a, do a, another D20 roll, Kevy. Okay. Saving, saving throw roll. Okay. I do I have any bonuses on Saving that? rolls a 13 and apply constitution to it. For Phil? Where's Phil's sheet? Hold on. Oh, I got so like, much shit Okay, up. you don't have a constitution modifier. It's a zero. So Okay. So that yeah. means you just have to roll a 13 or higher on a d20 okay, to make a successful go. save. 19. And you make it, and as you're walking okay. along, nice. you feel like you, you almost fall down. Whoa! Because you kind of double over from the the pain of the nausea that's been building up in your stomach, and oh. it's like you you suppress the urge to vomit and manage to stay on your feet. Ralph. <laughs> but oh. Stormy's gonna. As you're Stormy's doing that, along. like that's that's an unpleasant sensation. Yeah. But then as you're coming out of that, you feel like this real rush. You know, like an increase in uh, like adrenaline and euphoria oh. and the cemetery around you as you're looking at it starts to get kind of wavy and all of these shadows really start to mingle and oh. Phil starts to have an experience uh, where reality is no longer uh, he can no longer distinguish uh, <laughs> visually or audi audially or whatever. He can no longer distinguish exactly what's real and what isn't, but everything is really weird. Do I still see and, the party? Yeah, you, you can see everyone, but when you look at them, it's like it's not really them. It's very bizarre. Uh, they seem different. And, oh, fuck. And oh, you shit. notice that the things around you seem like they may be moving into different positions as well. Uh, the tombstones and the statues. You don't see, it's not like they've come to life, like they're dancing around and, you know, making facial expressions, but. No, but they're shifting. It seems like the position of everything is gradually mm -hmm. shifting, especially if you look away from it and then look back at it again. It seems like it's in a different location. <gasps> so you're like really disoriented now, even more than you ever were. Oh shit, guys! Things are moving. And I can't see it, but things are moving. Stormy's gonna stay with them. It's making and, it to uh, where to to make any kind of a conscious action like Phil. It would require Phil to really make an extreme effort of will to be able to do anything at the moment. Like, you know, if you were to poke him I, in the eye, he wouldn't be able to stop you. You know, like. <laughs> can I just kind of sink down into the? The ground? Yeah, here? yeah, you can kind of okay. melt into the ground and okay. for, for a little security cool. and, and ride it out. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'll hold on to the grass here. Like, Phil, <laughs> what's wrong? And, and you guys just kind of see him uh, sink down and uh, it, it, he, he looks happy though. I mean, he's, uh -huh. he doesn't seem to be in pain or anything, but maybe, maybe confused. Uh -huh. yeah. A little disoriented. Yeah. Uh. Stormy will be down. Other, she'll the, be on her. She'll get down to her knees. The young couple and have, have uh, they've done the same thing, and they're just kind of hugging each other and laughing and looking <laughs> at looking at everyone else, at all you guys. 
<laughs> Thor gets looking up, up. They're looking up at the sky. Thor, Thor gets a little upset and approaches George and grabs him up. He puts his sword away, but he grabs him up with his brute force, which he doesn't have. You know, he's not super strong. But um, hey, be nice. He's he didn't do anything. He's be like, nice. "What have you done to my teammates?" Be nice. You know? I'm fine. <laughs> he's, I'll be all right. He just kind of stares at you straight him. in the face and laughs. Like he's just, <laughs> yeah. He's not doing anything to retaliate or fight back. He just storming, storming, <laughs> and storming I just kind of push him back and let him go. And uh, uh, says you, to you must right. not have heart. You know, you this this moss zombie moss shouldn't be harming my teammates, or you will pay. And and I push him back. You know, <laughs> all right. He he gets a kind of concerned look on his face, but he doesn't respond verbally, and he, and he just kind of sits down, okay. kind of looks looks at the ground. Um, Stor uh, Stormy says to Lacroix and and Johan, and and she she's still with Phil, but she says to them, "This is obviously some kind of a hallucinogenic er er fungus." <laughs> <laughs> I bet we could. Fetch, I can bet we could sell this to an herbalist and make some coin. Oh yeah, you could. This is this is not bad, guys. You should try it. <laughs> Once you get over the stomach ache, it ain't bad. I got a weak the constitution. The stars are pretty. Phil. I got a weak <laughs> constitution. Phil. That's what you'll have to. The feeling, the feeling from it after a couple minutes kind of leveled off and um, it, it kind of starts to drop back down. Okay. It, it seems to be a short, it's it's fairly short fast lived. acting and, and short lived. Yeah. Okay. Like the, the whole, from the time you eat it to start to when you start to come back down is probably about 10 minutes. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. That's you have to roll one. for an addiction roll. Roll for an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, guys. So that's what it is. The people who are seeing the statues moving, they've taken a bite off of that fungus because you do, you see the world shift a little bit. That's what it is. They're just taking a hallucinogen. And Johann says, amazing, because yeah. he's never heard of this. Oh. And Stormy. Well, and you could imagine... Uh, you know, if you had taken a larger dose, who knows? I mean, what you would have seen or what yeah. would have happened. Yeah. And then again, but you don't really know the toxicity of it either. So you might not want to do that. <laughs> how much did Stormy, did, how much did uh, Stormy a lot. see George take? Uh, it was just like enough to fill the palm of his hand, you know? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Just, just so she gets an idea of. Size, How much? Of, size of a cookie or something. Okay. Okay. And uh they're just they're just sitting there kind of laid back on the ground still. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the couple is. Okay. Olala okay. goes wants to go back and, and collect a few um a little more of the moss now that she understands what it is. Yeah, Stormy's gonna go with Okay, so, so is LaCroix. The okay, three girls the three are of them. Yeah. And I'm going to take and I'm going to fill three more vials. Um, I'll check how many bottles I have. Well, I have five. Why don't I, why don't I fill all eight? No, I'll fill seven. I will. Okay. I'll have one vi empty vial left. Cool. And I'm just I'm gonna fill up two small sacks of the funk if there's enough. I mean, yeah, the, you yeah, know. yeah. You saw where you were at. There was a bunch of it on that okay. one log alone. There's enough to fill all your. You, you know, know I'm good, and I'm just I'm gonna, gonna keep gonna you guys two. company. I'm not gonna pick any up because I. Okay, I'm I'm yeah. gonna try my best to keep my hands off of it, just like when I cut the stuff off and slid it into a sack. I'm mm -hmm. gonna do the same. So just with work with my knife and. Or my dagger. You all, you all go back there and. Well, uh, three of us. Three of three you. Of us go back. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Phil's on the ground and 
Well, yeah, Phil's Phil's. I'm kind doing of, better now. Yeah, he's doing better. That's right. All right. Yeah, so you have no problem uh, going back and filling up your containers with the stuff. And then we return. All right. So you guys get back together. Um, Phil's kind of mostly back to normal now. He's able to speak and function again and everything. And <laughs> feels a little odd, but <laughs> the couple, uh, they, they're looking fine too. They're, you know, like they're kind of back to normal. They get back up on their feet, and uh, Georgie says, well, uh, we're probably going to head back into town and turn in for the night. Just well, uh, be careful. Uh, Johan, if you decide to get any more of that, just uh, don't overdo it. Well, I'm gonna... What happens if you do, Georgie? Do well, you know you're going to want to puke it up if you do. Uh, I wouldn't take more than a handful at once. How often can you take it? <laughs> it's up to you. As often as you can handle it. I don't know. Okay. Fair enough. Um, would you mind if we were to accompany you? It's dark, it's late, and there's safety in numbers. What do you say, guys? To you guys. The yeah. worst all for it. Yeah. Okay. We should we'll all... We shall... Uh, we shall... Accompany these magical right. teenagers. All right. Well, off we go. These tripped out teens. <laughs> All right. Well, they lead the way. They start uh, heading down Our the funky trail. new friends. Our heading funky trail, new friends. Uh, get out of the cemetery. And, and we're, you know. Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, as you guys are heading back, um, it's pretty late, you know, mm -hmm. at this point. You're talking wee hours of the night. I mean, mm. after midnight, so... Uh, We're going to let is it Is the all tavern day. open? Did you have a... Okay, I was going to say, did you have a plan on where you wanted to go for the rest of the night, or... Um, is I'm the tavern to, still ready. I'm sleeping I'm ready in. to go into the inn, yeah. So my, yeah, is it, my two is people it, are going to go to the inn. Is it open? Can we get in? Yeah, yeah, you could always. It, it's open 24 hours. I mean, and where are Georgie and, and his girlfriend going? Uh, they were just going to. They, they said they were going home. Um, we're, I'm, Johan's going to ask them um, before they leave if uh, they happen to have been at the uh, Peaceful Hornet Inn or wherever the, uh, uh, recently. And uh, caught the performance from that uh, traveling entertainer, who oh, with who. And, so you're going to question about the loot, the missing. Basic, loot. basically, but uh, asking if they were there and if they happened to catch the performance of that uh, hmm. Bobo. Manishi, Bobo. The, the girl says, yeah. "I I really wanted to go, but we didn't we didn't have the money to go." But uh, I would have liked to. That's really a shame about his loot. I you can't heard about it. that. Yes, I well, did. Well, Johan, Johan didn't know about the loot. Um, he, so, I'm, so Stormy says, so you didn't know, or so you know about the loot. Who did oh, you just, hear it from? I just heard it. I heard it from some friends. They were talking about it. They, uh, I, I guess... Someone went up and smashed in a window on the third floor. They had, they climbed up the outside of the inn, broke in a window, and went into the room and took it, is what I heard. Really? Yeah. That easily? Well, it doesn't sound easy to me. I don't know who would be able to do that, but someone did. That's a shame. Well, <clears throat> um, hmm. Well, yeah. thank you. I haven't thank heard you. any word on whether it's been found yet. Um, and how far is the uh, Peaceful Hornet from where the tavern that we were staying at? Uh, it's not far. It's, you know, be like a five, ten minute walk. And that happened, what, last the night before, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's been, it's been like one whole day now since yeah. that happened. Well, we should probably, we've got rooms, at least for the night. 
and uh, we could probably. What What do you say, guys? Do you want to uh, sleep this off and start up early first thing in the morning? Uh, yeah, sounds good. We'll be able to get a fresh start on everything. All right, so you guys head back to your rooms, and uh, we can put. I don't know if everyone has their character sheets updated. Um, and I don't know. Can you get into this game if I'm not on here? Yeah. Have you tried, have you tried that yeah, at all? Yeah, you, you can log in. Yeah. No, get into no, the game no. and do stuff on your character sheets or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, because we should get your experience points on all your character sheets. Because I know some of you are second level. Some of you had all the first level characters would have started with zero, but the second level characters. It'll so go by. Are we going to gain some experience on our little? Uh, yeah, commentary? but first we need to update, make sure we actually know how much you've got now. So, okay. um, so like, okay, looking at Bald Phil, he's a level two cleric. To be level two cleric, one thousand five hundred experience points is what he should be at now. Okay, where where is the XP? It's I'm right not. under equipment. Yeah, if you look right down there below equipment. Is. So fifteen hundred. Is what should be in current XP, and then for next level you need three thousand. And how much experience did I get today? And, and gonna, last week. Gonna, well, let's let's update our character sheet with um with how much experience we currently have, and then we'll all get an update maybe okay. next session or something. Um, I was I would what I was going to do is for for solving the mystery uh, today of the moving statues. <laughs> Uh, everyone gets 100 experience points. Cool. Okay. To add to your current total. Yeah. So where you just added so 1,500. 16. Yeah, change that to a 1,600. All right. Um, and I'm taking down that uh, I filled two small sacks of the fungus. Yeah, make sure you've got fungus. that. Uh, the zombie, zombie flesh fungus. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have seven vials. Okay. Okay. And that you, yeah, like you were saying, you might be able to sell to, you know, an herbalist or somebody of that nature, or <laughs> some kids on the street, <laughs> or some kids on the street, or yeah, some adults on the or street. Maybe hey, 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 kid, you want to hey, hey, kids, you, you want to yeah, you or, see some statues move, kids? Might be more useful to uh, hang on to it. Um, Could be, yeah. But then again, you might want to talk to an herbalist who knows about it because maybe mm -hmm. it's not good for very long. Who knows? So yeah. or maybe it can be used in a recipe. All that mm -hmm. stuff to find out. Okay. How many, um, what should I put down for my experience for my two characters? Well, I was going to do, I was going to let everybody do the same reward. So a hundred each, but what should you put down? You mean for what for they current, have now? Current experience and my next level, isn't it? Uh, now, Olala is level two. Yep. I see that. And level two magic user will have, Where was my... this is, uh, now this is technically player homework that I'm doing right now. Anything on the character sheet is player homework. Oh, okay. Well, if you want to get that <laughs> at the beginning of um, or next well, like, session uh, or something, we can do that as well. Like, if you guys are are able to, if you have time, and I know, believe me, I don't have time to do hardly any of the shit I want to do on this game, but I try. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, but cool. if you get a chance to update it all, yeah, by all means, you know, uh, and, get on and, here and keep your character sheets up to date as much as you can. Yeah. And if you like, I can uh, learn how the learn how the game rules work too. So like. Yeah. Like when I say, you know, uh, make a saving throw modified by strength, then you might immediately say plus one because you know your strength bonus is plus one, you know. Mm -hmm. So, like, the more you can get to know your characters, the quicker the game will flow. I just I mean, ordered a rule book, a physical book, yesterday. Oh, hell yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, I got my book. I got my book uh, Friday. Yeah, there's there's stuff in the book that hasn't come into play yet, but it will. I mean, the more you can learn about your spells and how they work too. I mean, we've got a lot of spell casters in the party. Four out of six. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you guys should really like when you have time to kill. You know, learn the how the spells in the game are working. That way, your characters will know what they what to do or. 
Mm-hmm. I got the how, uh, how it all works. I got the the basic fantasy equipment emporium. And oh yeah. In the field guide, I also got an adventure anthology because you mentioned something about you know if 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 one of us wanted to try DM in uh, cool. a, a little mini adventure or Hell side yeah. adventure. Um, and then I got the basic fantasy role playing third edition. Nice. Yeah. All the printed ones are, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I, know, I mean, gosh, four books for under 20 bucks. I, I know they're so cheap. It's hard to not hard to say no. Yeah. I was like, what a deal, especially when you, you know, you think of like Dungeons and Dragons or even Pathfinder and the rule books, like 30 bucks in itself. Well, yeah. You know, for one book. Yeah. If you were to get into a current game or a vintage game, either way, it's going to be expensive. But this is a way to do it with it where it's not expensive, you know. Yeah. And uh, and it's pretty well thought out. Like they, you can tell they play tested this for a long time and, uh, you know, rewritten it and revised it and stuff. So it seems oh, to be good. Awesome, awesome. Well, that sounds pretty good here. Sounds pretty. Sound good. flesh fungus. <laughs> All that stuff we did tonight was sort of. See, I had made up a just kind of the general scenario in my head, but all the details were pretty much made up on the fly there. Yeah. (laughs) You know, we're, we're kind of making up decisions based on our characters on the fly too, which are going to change really how, how your story going as a, I actually, uh, I worked on, I worked on an adventure this week, but it was, uh, detailing the missing loot, that whole thing. Cool. Cool. Well, so, we'll ready for next week. <laughs> yeah. So, if you want to learn more about the missing loot, yeah, you'll have to go investigate that. Yeah. That's we where we're going to go week. next. Yeah. So, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her first you know rule of DM is whatever you planned is thrown out the window in the first five, ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> nothing well, ever it, goes like it. And just, well, you don't see the. It's not like I have to throw it away, at least. I mean, it's all oh, on the yeah. back burner. Stuff I've already planned out is still there lying in wait. So right. uh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. We'll get to it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> and again, um, you know, we'll, we'll help keep the continuity of, of what's going on. I like how Graham's keeping a log of where we're ending up so we could recap when we get together. <sighs> If you yeah. like, I can post it on the Facebook page too, if you want. Yeah, that would be awesome. That mm-hmm. would be. Oh, and another thing I was going to mention is uh, bear in mind that this whole scenario with this new world and the new settlement, um, it's like every day that goes by, this is a developing situation. So think of it as like the first settlers who came to America. They could do whatever they wanted. They could take whatever they wanted. They could, I mean, they could get away with anything. And it's like that now, but it's not going to be that way for very long because people are going to be exploiting things over there. They're going to be going there and bringing things back. Uh, They're going to be claiming territory and building things. And how do I put it? If you want to get in, the best time is early because... I mean, the situation is changing rapidly. People are establishing themselves over there. And if you don't get in early, you might not get in. You know what I mean? And like, Yeah. And, um, and But we're also pretty much broke. You are. <laughs> you you are. Thorwald got, has work in the morning, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. And, uh, but so I like, Johan decided that he liked the idea of maybe sticking around a while longer and uh, upgrading, so to say. Yeah. Um, you uh, could totally uh, you know, do make, that. Make you some can... money yeah. and buy some more provisions. And he's still got his heart or his mind that he's going to go there someday. He wants to go to this new Zao and, and, and lead a life of adventure. But he's already finding there's adventure under his nose. Huh. <laughs> and... Uh, and don't forget, look, uh, Phil and Phil or Lacroix took a box out of that mute, mo- uh, the mm-hmm. mausoleum. We should, right? Ah, uh, yeah. yes, I will. Uh, Is it will... locked? 
No, no, it wasn't locked. It was just like a jewelry box. Okay. And, and it's just uh, like a random collection of, you mm -hmm. know, somebody's jewelry, basically. Okay. Um, some of it looked like it might have minor value, but, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of it's just kind of costume jewelry. But you could take that to, you a know, a pawn, a pawn shop or an appraiser mm -hmm. or whatever, and they could pick out what's good in it. Um, who's somebody carrying that or hanging on to it? You got yeah. It on a, yeah, one of sheet? them had a wooden box of tomb jewelry. I don't okay. Remember which one? But yeah, right. <laughs> I wrote it on one of them. All right. <laughs> Wooden box of tomb jewelry. Awesome. awesome. So you went to the cemetery and did drugs with some teenagers and stole some jewelry out of a grave. grave. Robin. It reminds <laughs> me of my teenage years. Damn it. <laughs> Doing hallucinogens in the graveyard. All like right. Robin tombs. Well, maybe not that part, but you know, I guess I don't remember all of it real clearly. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Okay, cool. Oh my gosh, that's, that's great. Well.